The Revenge class, also known as the Royal Sovereign, or R class, were the last Royal Navy battleships whose construction started prior to the outbreak of World War I. They were designed to draw a final line under the Anglo-German naval race, although the Germans had already quietly acknowledged internally that they'd lost that particular competition, and although the UK had consistently outbuilt the Germans in terms of both firepower and numbers, the previous Queen Elizabeth class, whilst representing a number of major advances, had also been hilariously expensive for battleships and had also had a number of notable drawbacks. Their armour scheme was to the older distributed style, they struggled to get close to their design speed of 25 knots, and due to this and other factors, they'd only been able to build five, and of these, one of them, HMS Malaya, was paid for by a colony, not in the original budget. They also used oil fuel, which, at least in the vast quantities needed to fuel a squadron of battleships, was not available in huge amounts. Trying to fix all these issues at once, the Revenge class reverted to the older 21 knot top speed, thus needing less than half the Queen Elizabeth's 75,000 shaft horsepower to power their four screws. As a result, they were also slightly shorter, narrower, and had a shallower draft, although this was only by a few feet in most dimensions. As designed, they were supposed to use oil and coal to lessen pressure on oil fuel stocks, but the return of Admiral Fisher saw them complete as oil fueled ships, which would also push their speed up somewhat. Their armour layout was also somewhat different, abandoning much of the tapering and distributed armour of the Queen Elizabeths in favour of a more uniform 13 inch thick armour belt that covered a greater area, although this was only halfway towards an all or nothing armour scheme. With the rising threat of underwater weapons, an extensive, for the time, system of anti-torpedo defences was also included. Like the Queen Elizabeths, the main armament consisted of eight 15-inch 42 calibre guns in four twin turrets, a pair superfying forward, and another pair aft. The secondary batteries started out as 14 casement-mounted 6-inch guns, although, again, as with the Queen Elizabeths, some of these proved far too wet and were removed in relatively short order. A total of eight ships were planned, after a variety of planning shenanigans at the Admiralty, to be laid down in late 1913 and early 1914. This huge single class of heavily armed battleships would completely underline the Royal Navy's superiority. But in the event, only the first five, Revenge, Resolution, Royal Oak, Royal Sovereign and Ramillies, were built. The last three, Renown, Repulse and Resistance, would have two different fates. Resistance was cancelled completely, whilst Renown and Repulse would eventually be totally redesigned and built as the Renown class battlecruisers. Due to their late start date, they were launched in late 1914 and early to mid-1915, and would so enter service with a couple of 3-inch anti-aircraft guns as standard, along with a handful of 47mm guns and a couple of submerged torpedo tubes. They would commission into the fleet during 1916 and 1917, and as a result, only Revenge and the unusually quickly completed Royal Oak, a product of the Royal Navy's Devonport Dockyard, would see action at Jutland, where neither of the ships would sustain any damage. However, due to their smaller size and slower speed, they were eventually viewed post-war as not as useful as the Queen Elizabeth's, and so the latter would receive the bulk of the major upgrades that the Royal Navy could afford. Also, being newer ships, ironically, the Revenges had more miles left on the clock, so to speak, and so there was actually a double motive to leave them for later attention. Nevertheless, they were given some refits in the late 1920s, with additional torpedo bulges, new fire control and enhanced deck armour provisions being fitted, and the rather ineffective twin 3-inch AA guns being swapped out for 4-inch weapons. Additional work was carried out in the 1930s that further increased the AA armament with more 4-inch guns, some pom-pom 40mm cannon and 50 cal machine guns, as well as the removal of some more of the 6-inch secondary guns and the submerged torpedo tubes. As with the Queen Elizabeths, exactly which ship got which precise refit varied, and the class began to diverge from each other, with the additional weight of upgrades gradually pulling their speeds back down again. Since none of the turrets on the Revenge class had had their elevation increased, the outbreak of World War II would eventually 
see the ships issued with superchargers designed to increase the maximum range of their guns via sheer brute force of explosive. But unfortunately, the most modern of the five, the Royal Oak, was torpedoed in Scapa Flow by U-47 very early in the war, taking hundreds of men with her, including my great uncle. The other ships would generally get ad hoc armour and anti-aircraft upgrades where possible during the war, with the torpedo protection system generally, Royal Oak aside, proving fairly successful, with a couple of the ships surviving some fairly significant torpedo strikes. As they were neither as fast nor as capable as the other British capital ships, they were generally relegated to second-line roles, but were fairly useful in these roles, primarily as convoy escorts, where they were highly effective deterrents to German surface raiders, mopping up Vichy French bases overseas, and supporting various Queen Elizabeth-class ships in the Mediterranean and Indian Ocean operations, and of course proving very useful in shore bombardment. By 1944, though, they were showing signs of age, and with more modern capital ships coming online, Resolution and Revenge were downgraded to training ships in the same year, whilst Royal Sovereign was loaned to the Soviet Navy for Arctic convoy escort duty, but came back in, shall we say, less than ideal condition? To the point that her turrets were rusted into place from lack of use. The remaining four ships would all be scrapped over 1948 and 1949, and one 15-inch gun from Ramillies and another from Resolution was preserved, and the two were placed outside the Imperial War Museum in London, where you can still see them today. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.